Palace of Holyrood House, the Queen's official residence here in Scotland. So this is when the Queen is in Scotland. She goes and lives here, if she's not at Balmoral. Now, after that walk, I'm gonna need a coffee because it's such a, oh, mate, that, oh. So, yes, so we're gonna have a look at this place. But first, I'm gonna get my much needed coffee. Oh, I'm really, Scottish Parliament building, so, Someone's getting interviewed. Maybe they need to interview me to think what I think of us and think what I think of Scotland. Scotland and well, it's Scotland, you know. Don't worry. I'm going to get my coffee and I'll wake up. The Queen's Gallery, and this is where we were up there. We walked up there. So I'm going to go and find myself a cuppa. I desperately need a cuppa. See what this coffee's like here. The Queen's Palace residence. Oh, brilliant. Great. We're going to cut through to go up to the hill. And this place is a very ancient place. That's right, we're at the cemetery here in Edinburgh. We're gonna cut across and go up to the hill up there. So, uh, yes, a sacred place. Well, you get a spectacular view of anything else. Jane Spence, writer to the signet, 1818. That's three years after the Battle of Waterloo. Wow, look at that. And look at that. Quite spectacular view. Robert Burns, 1796. The Burns Monument, built 1831 to 1839, that's when it was built. Uh, it commemorates Scotland's national poet Robert Burns, who was born in 1759, died 1796. Oh, wow. Wow. So we'll have a look at this. The Robert Burns Monument, the Scottish poet. Well, it's a bit of a, a tomb sort of feeling. I think they're doing some work cleaning it up a bit in here. Well, it definitely needs a bit of a dusting. Okay, so that's the Robert Burns Monument, and we will continue our walk around Edinburgh. This is St. Andrew's House, and uh, apparently there was a lot of squabbling about the, the design for years. And uh, they, even the King and Queen got involved. Venture Day in 1934, they got someone, said, right, you do it. And this fellow, Tate, he designed this building, but the significance of this site is that this was the site of a Endeavour's Carlton Jail, a grim fortress, a, a grim fortress, at the scene of public hangings. The prison was demolished in, 18, in 1930s to make way for this uh, building here. Apparently, it was by far the worst prison in Scotland. Cold, silent, and repellent. Its discipline was harsh and it died atrocious. A conscientious objector said that in prison there during the First World War, 
Following the incident, there were executions on this ground. The murderers are beneath the car park over there. So the bodies were... So this was the site of a prison and place of misery, squalor, and just death. And in the car park, they laid the bodies of those who were executed. Right. So thank, thankfully that's not there anymore, I suppose. But this is St. Andrew's house. Yes, St. Andrew's house was open on the 20, on, actually it was open on the 4th of September, 1939, less than 24 hours after the outbreak of the Second World War. This is where all the government bureaucrats come and work in here. So they just simply had to get stuck into it. Less than four hours after the outbreak of the first, uh, uh, the Second World War. That's incredible, right? Let's get let's get stuck into it. <laughs>